No, it went well, went well. You know, yeah. every class is so different. Sometimes you've got people who interact all the time and other times you've got okay. dead quiet classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens. Uh, you never know. Okay. You just take it yep. as it goes. Okay, so you are live okay. and I've made you host again. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, um, have a great class. Bye-bye. will do. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Welcome to uh, African Animals tonight. For you, you will be learning about some of our African animals. So if you'd like to get yourself ready, make yourself a cup of tea, and be ready for our next class. All right. Uh, stop the video. Stop. Hi, Esther. Hi, Lester. Hi, Sue. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Lovely to have oh, you wow. in class. Can yeah. I make you co-host? Sure, thanks. Oh, great. Thank you very Arias much. I was here earlier. Oh, it was good earlier, except I forgot to put my background up. <laughs> I, I had just come out of a different class. Oh. <laughs> I hadn't put my get set up background up and I nearly did it now. I, I, I turned on, I thought there's something wrong and registered, ah, oh, my get set up background's not there. So I've quickly put up my get set up background. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so they had a weird background for the previous class, but I don't think anybody, hopefully nobody noticed. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, today you've got one that you haven't heard before, my African animals. Mm -hmm. So yeah. hopefully you'll find something yeah, interesting. It's, yeah, it's going to be interesting because uh, I've known that you've been in Africa before. And, um, well, I lived there. I lived there for 63 years. Yeah. So um, that's what, that's my background is, is the African animals. So yeah. Um, and that's where I, I got my love for animals was in Africa. So, uh, yeah.
It's going to be an, in, I've been busy changing the, I've got everything in meters and, and kilograms. So I was uh -huh. quickly doing some conversions because uh -huh. at the moment we've got more uh, American people. So it yeah, doesn't make good. much sense to them. That's so I, I, I was doing a changeover yeah. for them. Yeah, different measurements. <laughs> Absolutely. America has all its own things. It's so yeah, interesting. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, their temperatures too, but I, our Australian temperatures are quite severe too. They really are. I mean, our a temperature in summer often goes into the 41, 42, okay. and that's hot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, here it's around 34. It's really hot already. Well, <laughs> add, a, add another 10 and then tell me it's hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Where you are, you don't really have a a a, a winter, do you? Not a cold. Yeah. Winter. Yeah. Uh, we don't. Um. Well, Philippines is a tropical country, so we don't really have a winter. It's just that sometimes in the um before the end of the year, it's it gets really cold, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of typhoon. Yeah, yeah. Of course, Maybe the typhoons are the things. Yeah. Yeah, no, those are those are, are scary things, typhoons. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> uh, you can't so, do anything so. about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, houses get flooded all over the all over up to up to the roof. So, wow. Oh, here's our first lady in Carol Sue and Donna. Would you like to let them in? I'll start the light. The um, connecting to the cloud. Excellent. Thank you. Hi, Carol Sue. Hi. Donna, lovely hey to have there. both of you back in class. <laughs> Great. I enjoy your classes and I enjoy your husband's classes too. Oh, well, that's good because <laughs> we, we both teach in a different way, which is nice. And so we complement each other. We're very different but uh, we complement each other, which is so great. Hi, Shirley, lovely to have you joining us as well. Uh, great to have everybody in class. Karen's joining us again today. Lovely to see you, Karen. Um, awesome to have everybody coming into class and Philomena's about to join us and oh Hiroko's coming into class too. Hi Hiroko, uh, hi Philomena, lovely to have all of you in class. Um, so it's great to have you with me today. Um, we are hopefully going to let you sit back and enjoy a, a bit of my history. Having come from Africa and having spent time in Africa, well, all my life in Africa and going to the bush as often as I could, um, I have a great love of animals. So it really is awesome to be able to share some of the, the animals. I'm doing the bigger animals today. In my second class, which is later on this month, I cover some of the smaller animals, the more interesting smaller animals that people often forget. And so those will also be part of what we are doing. So uh, welcome. I hope you all enjoy your trip around South African animals. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, African animals, share, and turn it into a PowerPoint. Come on, talk to me. Ah, there we go. Oh, it always jumps. All right. As I said today, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be talking about um, Ah, oh, Karen won't be able to speak tonight. No problem, Karen. Great that you are here anyway. Uh, lovely to have you. Um, right, we are going to cover, as I said before, some of the bigger animals and some of the most well-known of our African animals. Um, each one of them is so different and each one has a personality. So let's see who we are having and what we're going to cover. Uh, as you know, it's, we learn from each other. It's lovely to see some of your pictures. Lovely to see you, Hiroko. Lovely having you in class. And the, uh, everybody else, if you've got anything to say, please 
ask or just press your space bar, ask your questions. Um, I will stop after each animal, but if there's something you want to ask while I'm talking, please feel free because everybody learns from everyone else. Uh, if you're joining uh, by live streaming, the best way is to participate in the class, is to actually register. You can request a recording after the class at get set up, uh, help at getsetup.io. And uh, we're not paid to promote anything. So let's be Again, everyone. All right, a little, most of you know me, well, some of you do. I live in Perth, Australia now. I lived in Africa for 63 years and then came to Australia to help to look after my grandchildren some afternoons um, because my son is a shift worker and if he's on day shift, the children couldn't get to their activities. And so having come to visit, decided that actually it is such a beautiful place and took the chance of um, moving everything lock, stock and barrel. Fortunately, I have a very accommodating husband because these aren't his children, but he was prepared to move with me. Um, uh, we, uh, I have been an educator for 44 years, and I so enjoy working with both humans and animals. I have this incredible love of animals. The family will tell you I will not watch an animal movie. Don't, don't ask. I just cry from the beginning to the end, even if it's a funny one. I've done it since I was a child. And so everybody says, oh, okay, we're going to the movies, but the animals in it, mom. And I say, bye, see you next time. Um, and I don't know what causes it. I can, I can go into the bush, I can work with animals, but I cannot watch movies. Just something strange about me. I enjoy creating and making things, including puzzles. As you know, I've got a love of animals and I so enjoy being a Get Set Up guide and communicating and being able to interact with my peers. So let's begin. We have tall animals, really tall animals and short ones as well. We have the little tiny meerkats that are the cutest, sweetest little things. And everyone has their own personality and their own lifestyle. And it is quite amazing to see how they can live in harmony in the beautiful big parks that we have set aside for them in South Africa. <clears throat> uh, oh, hello from Canada, Shirley. Lovely, lovely to have you in class. Um, right. Um, we are oh, in South Africa. Obviously, we can't let some of the big wild animals roam around people would be scared and people would probably harm them. So instead, we create enormous parks for them. The Kruger National Park is huge and all the animals are able to live their natural way of life there. Um, there are fences around the outside to keep the humans out and to keep the animals safe. Um, in North Africa, there are even bigger parks. There's the Serengeti, where the Serengeti Plains are, and those are cover right across the middle part of uh, Northern Africa. So they are really big. But I today will be focusing on the South African animals. We have the, the big five. Uh, but I'm including others in the big five. The first of our big five is the lions. They're the only one of the cat family that likes to live in a group. The rest are not interested. They don't want to be in a group. Um, they live solitary lives and only get together in time to mate. But the rest of the time, they're on their own not lions. They live in a pride of lions and they are from the little babies right up to the, the biggest one. The females are the hunters, which is very unusual. You think the male was the hunter, but actually the females are the hunters. Uh, the animals, the, the males look after their pride. They protect them from any uh, person or other animal that might harm them. 
and they mark their territory and they're very territorial. They like their territory. They mark it with their urine so that they know this is my place. Um, other, others may try and enter, particularly young males, and they usually come off second best. When the young males get to a certain age, they are inclined to want to move on. They want to either have a go at dad to prove that they are now the king of the lions, uh, or they take themselves off and they move and find their own pride, and they then start a pride of their own. Um, a lion's roar is amazing because the lions that are in the zoo in Johannesburg, we used to live mm, probably six or eight kilometers away from them. That's about five miles away. And in the morning, first thing in the morning, you could clearly hear the lions roaring. So even though we didn't live anywhere near them, we still heard these beautiful roars uh, and visitors who came were a little afraid. They kind of thought the lion would come wandering up the road, but if they were in the zoo um, nearby. But they are beautiful. We do have places where we have some lions, the baby lions that people are able to pet. And then the lions are then removed and taken to places of safety. They are smaller um, reserves. And so they then can live free in those reserves and slowly introduced back into the wild. That is where I spent quite a bit of my time, were in the smaller reserves. I did go to the Kruger often as well, though. Any questions about lions? No, okay. Right, the leopard. The leopard is, for me, one of the most beautiful animals. His markings are exquisite. And with the kind of marking that he has, he can sit in the tree and you won't know he's there. I had uh, an experience where we were camping. Uh, we weren't in the Kruger. We were actually in one of the more um, remote areas just outside Johannesburg. And we went camping. We had set up our tents and we were very happy went to bed that night. Next morning, I got up thinking, okay, I'll make coffee for everyone. I was about nine years old at the time. And I went towards the fire and something made me look up. There was a tail flicking in the tree. And I realized it was a leopard. Now, for me, it was my first encounter with a leopard. My first instinct was to scream. But having been taught, don't make noise, I kept my eyes on the leopard and just backed away. Fortunately, the leopard wasn't really interested. It jumped down and it wandered off. But by that stage, the others had heard that something or felt that I was nervous because a few heads popped out of tents and the eyes were like, <laughs> this, uh, they were ready to zip up very quickly. Um, but the, the leopard just jumped down and off he went into the bush. So. There are still wild leopards in certain areas, particularly in the mountainous areas. You will still to this day get one or two um, leopards that are still out and about, but very rare and very rarely seen. But as you can see, when they sit on a, the branch of a tree, they blend in with the bark so easily. They can really jump far. They can, they can leap up to six meters, so that is, is really a high jump or a leap that they can make. They when they have had made a kill, they will then take the kill and put it in a tree. So if you see an animal hanging in a tree, a buck, then look around because you are likely to find the leopard who uh, killed that, that animal. They do not leave it on the ground for all the other scavengers to get at. Uh, they live a very much a loner life. And um, if you're wanting to look for them, look in a tree first. They can run at about 36 miles an hour. I have done some translations of, of different figures for you because I know most of you are in America and you use a different thing to a different measurement to me. 
Uh, but they are, to me, one of the most beautiful animals in the world. Any questions? Not today, right. I'm sure they'll come just now. Now the cheetah, he is not one of the big five, but he, he is also a very beautiful cat. The, when you are looking at the animals, the leopard and the cheetah, just fleetingly, the color of their coat is so similar that people often get the two confused. But there's one very specific way you can tell between the cheetah and the leopard, and that is the black mark that runs down the side of their face. Looks like they've been crying. And though that is your cheetah, you can always see the cheetah. Baby cheetah are called cubs, and they have a very fluffy fur to start, and then slowly they're their um, fur changes to a more hardy fur. Um, the females live alone unless she's caring for her cubs and she's very protective of those. Um, she can have up to nine cubs and she'll stay with them for 18 months and then the cubs stay together and mom moves away. So, um, and then they'll, they'll live on their own and start their own lives. When they start feel that they are brave enough, they will move off and, and be, be loners. But until they feel that way, they will live together as, as a little family. Um, they're carnivores, uh, so they eat the meat. They have the most amazing eyesight. They can see for up to three miles away. So that is quite amazing. We certainly don't have that kind of accurate eyesight. I mean, we can look at a view that's far away, but accurate eyesight to be able to see a small animal, we can't do that, but they can. They have an incredible eyesight. Um, and then they just pounce on it. They can look at something as small as a rat and be able to see it from a distance, almost like an eagle. They have that incredible eyesight. Um, they run at a speed of around 130 kilometers, which is 80 miles an hour. So they can, they can pretty much outrun a car for quite a while before the car can then speed away. They obviously can't keep going as long as a car can. But uh, they, a cheetah is the fastest land animal in the world. Again, a very beautiful animal, um, but deadly. They're all, all of them are wild. Don't ever forget they are wild animals and get, pay them the respect that is due. If you are in their territory, then give them their space. Any questions? Uh, the size of a leopard is uh, about four foot, and a leopard weighs, um, uh, sorry, it, it, a leopard is about four foot and weighs 60 pounds, and a cheetah is a bit bigger. He's five foot, and he weighs about 80 pounds. He's slightly bigger. Any questions? Okay, let's continue. There's some questions. Um, been to a cheetah sanctuary in South Africa, actually paid with one of them. Donna, oh, wonderful. Or um, they, they, some of them can be turned back into the wild. It depends on how they are released. If they um, are released in um, slowly into a small section of, of a park. I have seen some being released, but often the animals in the sanctuaries move into the smaller parks that are specially um, created for them. And so they lead a, a very happy uh, free life, but they are watched. And if you find they're not able to eat by themselves, food will be strategically given to them so that they are able to, to stay healthy. Um, so it's a, it's a long process if they ever want to release them. But uh, some have been successfully released. Others go into the small parks. Okay, lovely to play with the, the, the babies. They are so cute. Right, 
now what do I just want to change? Right, let, oh, right, yes, Hiroko. Have you got a question? I, I, yes, I have read many, uh, many cases of porchas. Porchas yes. in Africa. I don't know whether it was in South Africa or yes. other Northern African yes. countries. But in South to... Africa, poachers are the deadliest weapon for all our animals. They have nearly wiped out the rhino population. Um, even mm. with the fences, even with the patrols, these poachers manage to get in and all they want is the horn and they leave the animal to die having just taken the horn. Um, some of them come and some of the, I, I don't even like hunters, but you know, they're, uh, they're I just ignore those, but they at least are, are in a, done in a, a controlled environment. But poachers just come in, they find a way through. You see, the fences are so long, and even with patrols uh, and electric fences, these poachers manage to get in and out. They are a huge problem in Africa. They, they want either the skins or the horns or uh, of the animals, and they are relentless they have no love for animals whatsoever they are are a big problem in our lives <coughs> all right the elephant we have our baby elephants and our big elephants they are wonderful i had a marvelous experience where i was in one of the smaller sanctuary type um parks and there was an elephant there and I was feeding it and talking to it and I turned around to get something and the next thing I was flying he had picked me up with his trunk and he put me on his back it was <laughs> the most scary thing but it was beautiful um, there I was suddenly on the back of this elephant and uh, more surprised than anything else. Um, and I, it, it meant that I had a, a, a kind of relationship with it. Um, and after that, whenever I went there, the first thing that was out was the trunk. Um, and I would talk to the trunk and, and talk to these animals. He was never going to leave this particular sanctuary. So he stayed but there are some really wonderful things that you can the the elephants are the one thing I find totally amazing about elephants is you can drive past a herd of elephants and not see them now elephants are um, three meters high and four meters long and they weigh 6,000 uh, kilograms, which is, um, let me put it in, they're 10 feet high and 16 feet long, and they weigh 13,000 uh, pounds. So they are not small animals, and yet you can miss them altogether. They go in amongst the trees, and they just stand still. And when they are standing still, you can miss an entire herd of elephant. All you need to see is a flick of a tail or a flap of the ear, and that will alert you to the fact that the elephants are there. But otherwise, you drive straight past them. They are, it, it is amazing how they can just blend in with the trees. So, so easy. And right at the edge of the road, they're not far away or deep in the bush no they're right there and then when you stop and you look then you can see the legs and you can see the body and you can see everything else but as you are slowly driving past you don't see them it is it is amazing when a baby is due to be born the, they form a circle around the the mother and the baby and then they protect it until it is able to stand up and even then, all the females stay very close to the, the, the female with her baby and protect that baby until it's big enough to be able to fend for itself. When they're first born, they actually fit underneath mom. They can fit right underneath their mother. The same goes for a rhino. They fit underneath their mum. And um, they, they travel there and then they hang on to mom's tail uh, when they are walking so that they don't get lost or left behind. They, they, the, the leader of the elephants is a woman. She's the matriarch. She is 
she dominates the whole herd. What the matriarch says goes. And if you step out of line, particularly if you're a young male in musk and you are getting quite flirtatious, you are turfed. You are told to leave the herd, find your own herd, find your own family. So the young males leave at about the age of 13 or so. They then leave um, the, the between 13 and 15, they leave the herd and find a new family and start their own herd, but they will not be the leader. The female will be the leader of the group. And she's very strict. Um, it's always the oldest female in the the herd. And it's so interesting. Sometimes the elephants will leave when they know they're going to die. They leave the herd. They, If they are still with the herd and they die, the, the herd will actually mourn that elephant for up to a week. They will be there. They will watch over it. Um, it's, it's like a human almost. They actually mourn their dead. It is, it's quite amazing to watch. When they go to the water, they have a lot of fun. They squirt each other with the water. They drink, obviously drink the water as well. Um, they give the babies uh, a nice little wash. The babies are the sweetest little things, but they are watched very carefully by all the females of, of the herd. They become like nannies or second moms and they watch the babies. So mom doesn't have to do everything by herself. She has a backup plan all the time. Um, and they're known as aunties. Um, and so it's, it, it is really a beautiful way that um, uh, the, the families look after each other when they are such huge animals. Any questions? Um, yes, I have a question. Mm. Um, we hear that elephants have, a, what is it? Elephants always remember or they never forget. Yes, so they, they have they have an amazing memory. Um, they, if somebody or something has hurt them, and years later they come across that same thing or person, they will react to that person. They, they do have a, an a, a, an amazing memory. Um, I'm not, I don't know the his, history behind it or the science behind it, but yes, they are phenomenal with their memory. Um, they will remember places they've been and they will remember people. If somebody's done something good for them many years ago, they will remember that person. Um, there are many uh, stories in, in the African traditions and in the African African life, the talk of the memory of the elephants. And of course, elephants live to a ripe old age. They live to about 50. So they, they live a, a long life. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, I have a, mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Uh, are there many uh, uh, children's stories where animals kind of represent quite a quite different character as compared to the United States because I had a I had a German mother-in-law. She grew up in a, in a Tanzania and later on retired into Capstad. And this a story she used to tell me was quite different. Let's say here in the United States, I'm not from here, but the, mainly elephant is like a Bambi. And Disney type of characters. Yeah, but they are. No, no. I could hardly believe the way all those big animals played, the characters, etc., are quite differently presented to children as compared in the United States. I, I, I'm, I, I don't know about the United States because I've, I've never been there. But yes, in, in Africa, we. The, the children live amongst the animals or live um, in, in the wild themselves. So they, they, the, the, they have a great respect for the animals. Um, each animal does have its own character. 
each each type of animal some are shy some uh, are are quite reticent to be be near people uh, for instance an elephant if if you get a bull elephant and he's in musk and you are driving along the road and he's standing in the road you have to wait till he decides that he's going to leave that road uh, if you don't or if you hooted him he will flap his ears and he'll come flying at you and you do not want to be trodden on by an elephant. You don't want your car trodden on by an elephant. You reverse down that road, whether it's a dust road or not, very, very quickly to, to get away from an, an, an enraged elephant. Their temper can be really bad, but it's, it's a rarity. Usually they are very docile and very gentle creatures where in the sanctuaries where I was working and where I, I spent my time, the, the elephants would greet you in their own way. They would flap ears or they would put out a trunk. Um, they, each animal had its own way of, of bonding with you. Um, and it's very, very special to be able to do that. They're definitely not Disney type characters at all. When I look at, at the Lion King and I look at things like that, they, there's a modicum of truth there. But the, the real animal has its own um, character as well. But they, when they do the Disney type characters, they do pick on certain aspects of, of a character, of an animal, but most of, uh, there's a lot more behind that, that animal that's, that's there. Does that answer your question, Hiroko? Okay, great. Now, um, let's have a look. This is one of the most dangerous of all animals. He looks quite docile. You see him floating in the water and you think, hmm, big head, big mouth. He's just wallowing in the water. When he gets out the water, he walks so slowly. He can't be a dangerous animal. Don't be mistaken. First of all, those jaws are deadly. He's got a very large mouth with very sharp teeth in it. And if you get between a hippo and its baby, and its baby might be on the bank hidden in the grass and you don't know that, the hippo will come flying at you. They can travel very fast when they want to. The cow is so protective of her baby. She really is. And, uh, any, and the baby doesn't have to be too small. She will protect her family. And so will he. So don't get too close to hippo. Don't be mistaken that a hippo is a docile creature. He is not. He is one of the most dangerous animals in the world. Um, they are called a river horse. Um, the, their name, a hippo, hippopotamus means river horse. Um, and they spend a lot of their time in the water, in streams, in lakes, in ponds, um, because they are so hot. If they're such a big body, they try and keep the temperature down. And so they wallow in the water as soon as the temperature gets hot. Once the evening comes, then they will come out onto the bank. They need to because they are herbivores. So they need to graze on the land around where they are swimming. Uh, and so they will then come out. They are the third largest mammal on earth. Um, they are behind the, 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 of the land animals, uh, behind the rhinoceros and the elephant. Uh, the the uh, hippo is about 13 foot and he weighs about uh, 3,300 pounds. So he's not a lightweight at all. Um, the male is called a bull and the female is a cow. The baby's a calf. Um, the one thing I like about what they call a group of hippos. They call them a bloat. And they do, they look like they're bloated. They look like they are full of water and they'll actually possibly float on the water. But obviously not, they walk along under the water uh, and, they win, and just sit there to keep cool. But as I said before, please be careful of a, a hippo. They are very dangerous. Those, that mouth and those teeth, 
Mm -mm. You do not want to come into contact with any of those. Any questions? Will they eat crocodiles too? Uh, no, they're herbivores. So they only eat plants. They will bite something that comes too close to them and harm it, but they won't eat it. They, they, are, they only eat plants. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> now, we have two different types of rhino. Our rhino, when I'm just trying to think, just before I left South Africa, which is three years, probably five years ago, they were killing up to 300 rhino in a day at times. It started off being a small amount. There were 30 rhino, 50 rhino, and eventually it became an epidemic. They then had to start setting up people and having patrols that walked those fences daily in and out uh, to try and prevent the killing of rhino. Because there is a saying, people believe from way back that the horn of the rhino is an aphrodisiac and that it's got great healing powers and it's been proved scientifically there is nothing in a rhino horn it is just a piece of nail it's like our nails uh, so it is not of any value whatsoever to to uh, um, fixing any disease or things like that that's all in the mind um, but they still kill these beautiful rhino, take the horn and just leave the animal to die. And it is, it is tragic. So they are working really hard. They seem to have got it far more under control now. The, the rhino population is slowly starting to recover because the cutest thing to see is a little baby rhino following behind mum. And then they'll go off a little on their own and mum will make a sound and psh, baby's back and padding along behind mom and sometimes it'll go a little way ahead and mom makes the sound and it comes straight back um we followed a mom and baby for quite some time watching this and baby was so keen to go and investigate and mom was having none of that she was making sure baby stayed exactly where she wanted him there are two types of rhino the white rhino and the black rhino you can tell the difference between them by the lip of the rhino a white rhino has a square lip as can be seen in the middle picture uh, on the right while the black rhino has a pointed lip um, and he is smaller than the white rhino we see many more white rhino than black rhino in our parks um, and so um, the size of the uh, sorry I've got to look down because I've changed it to for you um, the black rhino is, the white rhino is about 13 feet and the black rhino is only 10 foot so he's not as big as the white rhino and they weigh anything between 3,000 kilograms and 5,000 kilograms so they are a very heavy animal they've got a very small brain so they don't think as maybe as well as a lion or one of the other animals might think um, and so they they do walk slowly they do, don't go at any great speed um, and that they are that because of their size they 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 are almost like a dinosaur they've got a tiny brain and this enormous body that goes with it they say uh, the rhino comes from way way back so um they then the rhino horn is made from protein called keratin, um, and it's the same as the fingernails and hair. That uh, and the, they are hunted by humans for their horns. They again are herbivores. They are happy to eat any plants on the ground, the grasses, and possibly some of the leaves as well. And a group of rhino are called a crash. And they do crash through the bush because they're so big. They don't have any option. They come crashing through. They're not a quiet animal when they walk because they are big and they're heavy. And so you can hear them in the bush. Surprisingly enough, you don't hear the elephant, but you do hear the rhino. Any questions you, about rhinos? Um, is it the black and the whites? 
uh, mechs? Uh, no, they don't. They don't. They we don't get across. Uh, they they sometimes you'll find them in a similar area, but the, the white and, and stick to white and the black stick to the black. Oh, okay. So they they keep to their their own species as such. How fast do they run? Um, a, a hippo. A, I mean, a rhino runs uh, not very fast at all probably four or five kilometers an hour at the most and probably not even that fast um it's because of their bulky size they can't they can for a very short time run a little faster but they then slow down because of their size so they can't run away from a poacher there's no chance they can get away they can try and gore him, but if he's got a gun, you, you don't have, they don't stand a chance. A buffalo. This is the last of the big five, is the buffalo. The Cape buffalo is the most distinctive one that we have in, in southern, southern Africa. Um, they are distinguished by their color and size and their horn shape. They have this beautiful rounded shape to their horns. And sometimes the horn even joins at the top. It goes right round. It's not often you see that, but it, it is really beautiful. And they also go downwards. So sometimes they, they go up, but mostly they go in a downward fashion down. Um, they, 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 make them look a very elegant animal. They have lots of ticks and insects on them. So they always have ox pecker birds on their backs. Most of the animals do that live in the parks. They, they are the host to a lot of, of insects, um, ticks, fleas, mites, all sorts. And so the birds have a wonderful time on their backs, picking off what they want for their dinner. Um, they, they're a very imposing animal. But one of the things that I find so interesting is all the animals go to the same waterhole. And there isn't a, a rule, but there seems to be an unspoken rule that you don't attack another animal while they're drinking. Um, I've never yet seen an animal being attacked while it's drinking. After it's finished, as it's leaving the waterhole, yes. But while they are actually drinking, there seems to be an unwritten um, rule amongst the animals that they don't attack each other during drinking time. But once they finish, then they fair game again in order to be to to drink. Um, they. They are the females have horns, but they are much smaller and much narrower. But the male of the buffalo is really beautiful and elegant as an animal. Um, the I don't think there's anything else that I wanted to say. When they run, they are they lumber, but they really go with their lumbering as they, they get going. And they can run at a fair speed for quite some time. If you go to the Serengeti, which is in the north of Africa, Tanzania area, there is a time when all the animals leave from the east to the west and the west to the east. And it's a migratory time and thousands of animals leave together and they run in their herds. They all run in their herds and they, they get going. They are quite amazing in what they do. Um, and so they, that if you ever want to go and see um, a, animals migrating, you can go up in a balloon and you can watch these thousands of animals taking off across. And they're looking for more food at that time. Um, and then they move back again to the east. They go through rivers, they go over plains, and they all go together. And then you've got your predators that eat animals on the way, but they, they just take and go. It is, it is the most amazing sight to go to the Serengeti and watch the animals migrate in the Serengeti. Uh, any more questions about the buffalo? Yes, is there one leader who leads the whole taken in, in group to, you know, 
as far as a pack to move? Um, no, um, they they just I, I I actually don't know the answer to that. What I'll do is I'll have a, I'll I'll do some more research on that because that I haven't I never even thought about that. When you see the buffalo, they usually one or two or three of them together. But as I say up in the north, it's a different thing where they really go in huge herds. Um, but in in our parks, there are only usually two or three together at a time. So they sort of like a family and they move around as a family, but I'll, I'll check on that for you. Yes, Hiroko. Uh, I want among all this kind of carnivorous, uh, let's say tiger, uh, cheetah, and et cetera. Uh, human being, we kill each other or murder occurs. Do they kill each other? Let's say um, no. other lion to eat? No. They, they go for other animals of prey. They go for the um, zebra. They go for the buck. Um, no, they don't. They don't go for each other. The only time they fight each other is over the, the leadership of who is going to be the head of the family. Then they will fight, particularly the lions. If one of the young lions think he's going to be able to take over as the leader of the, the uh, herd or the pack, they would then, um, then he, the pride of lions, he wants to be the head of the pride, um, he will then fight the male that is the leader for that position, but certainly not to eat, no. They eat other animals. So for instance, tiger, would they uh, kill cheetah to eat for food? Um, not, well, I don't know about tigers because we don't have those in Africa, but not usually. They, they go for the young defenseless, defenseless animals. They don't mm -hmm. go for, for other predators. Um, I've never heard in all the time I lived there of them going for each other. They rather go for the smaller animals that are, are more defenseless animals, the buck and uh, zebras and even uh, giraffe, um, and the small babies of the other animals. But no, they don't go for each other. Not that I'm aware of. Oh. Yes, Shirley. Do the buffalo? Yeah. Do, do both the male and the female both have horns? Yes, but the female's horn is much smaller and much thinner. She doesn't look nearly as majestic as the male. The male has has the the, the big, imposing, beautiful horns. Okay. Like, like, but like a lot of the animals in the, the animal world and the birds, the male is the one that has all the beauty and the female is usually the, the less attractive and the, the um, sort of not as noticed uh, as the male. A oh, lot they, of, just, of the they just think that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we've got it the wrong way around. Who knows? Eh? <laughs> yeah, we, who knows? <laughs> Uh, maybe animals know better than we do. <laughs> oh, and dear. just a general question. Are there yes. hyenas? Do you have yes. hyenas? In? Yes, yes, we do. We have hyenas. I talk about hyenas in my second class. Yes, oh, we I have hyenas. Uh, they're beautiful. We get uh, and the jackal. We get the black back jackal and the hyena. And the hyena babies are jet black. And often they have their babies in a little culvert. And we've come across the, the little babies trying to look out of the culvert. Um, and they are just too cute for words. Uh, but I will talk about those in my second class. They're, the I hyena is one of my animals. Ah, you're a you're a hyena fan, are you? <laughs> All right. Now the zebra. The zebra is such an interesting animal. Believe it or not, no two zebras are alike. They're not even mother and baby. Every zebra has its own stripes. It's the same as us. We have every person has their own thumbprint. So every zebra has its own print. So there are never two zebras identical. And for me, that is quite amazing that, that creation has made these incredible animals and 
everyone is different um, because you look at a zebra, you say, oh, stripes. But no, if you look at their stripes, their stripes are so different. And uh, even some of you think, oh, those two are identical. And then if you look carefully, no, they're not. They are different. They are like so like a horse in so many ways. They uh, There are four different types of, of a zebra, but we have a the Birchall zebra is the one that is mainly found in um, South Africa, and uh, but there are other zebras as well. They've got a very distinct black and white stripe. Um, and the theory is that its stripes help to camouflage them from predators. If they're standing in long grass or under the trees, the dappled light coming through the trees definitely does protect them. You have to look carefully to find them there. They're very social. They live together. They live often with the buck. You'll find them with the springbuck or the blessed buck or, or the impala. You'll find them, they live very comfortably together. They are very sociable, very happy to be together. They're herbivores and they live on the grass while the, the little buck eat the little leaves. So they don't have to fight with each other for food. The, the two are different. One eats the leaves, one eats the grass. So they get along incredibly well together. Um, they walk, they trot, they canter and gallop just like a horse. Um, and the male is called a stallion and the female is a mare and the babies are foal. So it's very much like a horse. Um, they are, are not scared of humans. They often, we have a couple of um, parks that are very close to the Kruger, the way they can come in and out of the, through the fence. And they'll come and, and see what you're having to eat. And um, is it something that I might like? And then they'll wander away. So they, they're quite sociable. Um, and they, if they feel they're uncomfortable with you, they will move off. Um, but they, they're really beautiful creatures. Uh, and a herd of zebra is known as the zeal or a dazzle of zebras. Lovely wording that they have. Any questions about zebras? Do they ever attack people? No, I've never heard of them attacking people. They might kick you if you get too close, just like a horse. <laughs> and they might give you a bite if you stick your hand in their mouth. But no, they don't attack people. Do people try to ride them? Mm, I think I think um, that there's actually a law that you may not. Um, no, people don't ride by the zebras and they don't let you get that close unless they are tame. Then maybe somebody might be able to, but the wild ones definitely not, no. No, they, they keep their distance. They, they'll be close enough, but far enough away. They, they're very, they, they're human savvy basically. They, they know when to come close and when to make themselves scarce and uh, just take a, take a gallop off down the road or take a gallop off back into the bush. So they're, they're really, really lovely animals. The last animal for today is one of my favorites, and that is the giraffe. They are so beautiful. They are very tall, very elegant animals. Um, their, their height is about 14 foot, and they weigh about 1,500 pounds. So they're not a light animal. At one stage, we believed that the uh, giraffe was mute. You couldn't, because you never ever hear a giraffe. But it has been proved that they talk to each other at a decibel level that's too low for our human ears to hear. So they do make sounds and it is heard by each other, not necessarily by all animals and certainly not heard by humans. They have the most amazing tongue. It is long and it is black. And the first time you feed a giraffe, you see this long black thing coming towards you and you feel snake. Your, your first reaction is to retract. And then you think, no, hang on, I'm feeding a giraffe. And it brings this very soft tongue down and removes seed from your hands. They, they will take, they'll eat corn from your hands in some of the, the places where you are able to get close enough to them. 
I had a, a, a wonderful incident with a, a giraffe. I was in my tent and I had my tent under a tree. Um, in the morning, I opened up my tent and I thought, there's a pole there. I didn't put my tent near a pole. And I looked up the pole. It wasn't a pole. It was the leg of a giraffe. He was eating the leaves of the tree above my tent. I could have touched him. I didn't because I didn't want to frighten him. But it was a wonderful feeling to be that close to a wild giraffe and not disturb him. So for me, that was a really special time. A giraffe, although he's got a long neck and long legs, his lick cannot reach down to the water. He has to actually spread his legs out really wide in order to be able to drink or go on his knees. They, they do drink on their knees at times as well, but they spread their legs out and they go down to drink. They really look so strange when they are drinking. Um, and they, they are, are really beautiful creatures. They, they are fortunate. They can eat all the top leaves where none of the other animals can get to. So they've always got an abundance of food and they really enjoy it. Um, they can run quite fast. They don't sleep. They have these wide eyes and they, they, in a 24-hour period, they'll sleep between 5 to 30 minutes. That's all the sleep they need. They, they're not a, an animal that sleeps. So it's quite strange. Um, uh, what else about a giraffe? I, I love them. Um, one of the things that you can do if you are interested in, in the wild animals, if you go to the Kruger National Park website, you will find that they have a a link where you can go and watch the animals coming to the water holes. They have cameras at different water holes. And so you can actually see right through the day, 24 hours of the day, you can see coming and going whatever is coming to that water hole. And um, that is live fed and you can just watch it whenever you want to. And there are a few other parks that do the same, but I know that the Kruger does that. You have your live feed. There, there are, are quite a, a number of sites where you can actually watch live what's happening in the, in the wild. And that is awesome. Any more questions before I close? I have a question. Yes, Hiroko. Yes, uh, who, who owns those animals? Do, do they belong to the government of South Africa? Or is an individual where no. to do the ra large ranch or something? Can you own, let's say, zebra, etc. cetera, yes. your own pet? Um, if they are in the big parks, like the Kruger Park, that is government owned. Uh, mm -hmm. But the smaller parks are privately owned and the people buy the different animals to have in their parks. And there are strict rules about what happens within their parks as well. They are, are monitored and looked after carefully so that they, they are not, um, and the animals are looked after well in, in the, the different groupings. But yes, no, those are privately owned animals. And then in the parks are the, the ones in the wild are government. The, the government owns the land and the animals are free to roam on the land. So mm -hmm. I suppose you could say the government owns them. Uh, nobody ever talks about owning them. They own the land and the animals are just there. <laughs> and they've now opened the fences into uh, Zimbabwe and into Mozambique and into Botswana. So the park is now bigger. It now spans, goes over into the other um, countries, surrounding countries. And so it's made the park even bigger. Mm -hmm. So that they, they are able to, to, the animals can roam even further during that time. So not, none of those animals are distinguishing. They are so well protected, so there is no danger of species. This, well, we, this. we try not to because, uh, but with the poachers, Okay. Poachers can come and go. Poachers are the problem. Po poachers are the problem. If, if they get to a point where there are too many animals and too little food, then they will cull some of the animals um, or they will try and capture them and then 
take them to other places. Their first instinct is to capture and release elsewhere. If they can't, then they cull. But they, their it's capture and release is, is the first choice. All right. So what, so what does it cost for a safari, for like say for a day? Um, I, I can't tell you now. It'll be very inexpensive for you in America because um, your American dollar is 10 South African rand. Oh. And so your American dollar goes far. <laughs> your American dollar goes very far. Uh, you can have a very inexpensive holiday in South Africa because of the, the rand dollar exchange. Uh, oh. it, is, it is 10, 10 or 11 now to yeah. one. So, yeah. I've looked at the, the prices of safaris in the past. And the least expensive has been about three grand up to five grand and even higher. But this is not a day safari, of course. This is no. like a week with accommodations, of course, no airfare. Um, yeah. Just two quick things I wanted to say. Um, I did used to look at uh, some of the watering holes and it was mm -hmm. always so interesting to see uh, the animals come to the watering hole. Number one. Number two, if anyone is interested in uh, watching giraffes, here in the U.S., there is a place called uh, Animal Adventure Park. And one of the giraffes there, Jahari, is pregnant. And um, there's a camera on her 24 hours a day. And, um, you know, she will, you can, you will be able to see her deliver when she does deliver. So if anyone's interested in that, uh, wow. and that's through YouTube, YouTube okay. Animal Adventure Park, Jahari and Oliver. Fantastic. Thank you so much for letting us know about that. That is so interesting because that's something to see animals uh, having their babies is amazing. And the fact that those animals get up straight away within minutes, they are up and about and on. They, they might be wobbly, but they're walking. Think of us. We're still sitting flat on our bums after six months. We are not moving anywhere in a hurry. So it's amazing that animals can do that. It, it really is. Um, that, that's the, where the marsupials of Australia are kind of like humans. They sit in the pouch for quite some time and don't have to go anywhere. Um, but uh, yes, it is, it is awesome. Um, any other questions? This is really impressive. Oh, well, now my second one that I do has got the wild dogs, it's got the armadillo, it's got our beautiful little meerkats, it's got the warthog with his tail, we've got our arshpark, um, so there are lots of interesting little animals that I'll be discussing later on this month. So I hope you'll be able to join me for that if you've enjoyed today. Yeah, very much. Yeah. Oh. Great. Uh, if you want to, uh, any other suggestions, any other kind of travel that might be able to put together, please give us uh, some information and we can see if we can maybe come up with a, a different one. I'd like to possibly do some um, Asi Asian animals and uh, sort of go and look at different countries, but that uh, will be in the future still to come. But um, We'll see. We'll see how we go. Uh, thank you so much. If you would like a copy of it, please go to uh, help at getsetup.io to get a, a, you can do your own um, recording of it. And I will send you an email afterwards with the, that information on it. Yes. Thank you so much for joining yes. me today, yes. everyone. It was excellent. Thank you so much. Oh, well, I'm glad you enjoyed my, my passion of animals. I'm going to um, repeat the whole thing to my grandchildren tomorrow. <laughs> oh, well, that'll be awesome. Yeah, that'll be great. Hi, Paula. Lovely to see you. <laughs> I see some of the old faces. It's lovely to have you in class. Uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing all of you again in one of the other class. And Shirley, I... Hi, Shirley. <laughs> Lovely to have you. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone, and I'll see you again another day. Bye for now.
thanks and bye-bye. Bye.